Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Monday, July 24th, 2023. The Secretary of State says Russia has lost. The President of the United States says Russia has lost. What kind of nonsense is the CIA feeding to these guys? We will talk about that with the great Phil Giraldi in just a minute. But first, this. Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here, and the verdict is in. Everywhere I go, people are asking me, why is everything so expensive? And their stom- why are their stomachs churning when they look at their IRA accounts? Listen, many experts suggest that we are about to approach a recession. When it's going to come, no one knows. But why take a chance? Do what I did and protect yourself by adding gold to your portfolio. Many of you know that I am and have been a paid spokesperson for Lear Capital. I believe in Lear Capital and I trust them. Lear is the company that I use when I buy gold from my portfolio. They have 25 years of experience and thousands of five-star reviews and a 24-hour risk-free guarantee. How can you go wrong? Here's the number to call, 800-511-4620. You see it at the bottom of your screen. 800-511-4620, or go to learjudgenap.com. Get your free gold investment guide and take control of your financial future. And here's a special offer for friends and fans of Judging Freedom. You can see if you qualify for a $15,000 bonus in gold. That offer won't last forever. So call now, 800-511-4620. That's 800-511-4620, or go to learjudgenap.com. So I want you to uh, take a look at a a statement made by uh, President Biden uh, right about the time you were writing your piece uh, at Vilnius. After Vilnius, he went to Helsinki. After Vilnius, you wrote a brilliant uh, analysis of it. Here's what President Biden had to say with apologies for him, because a lot of it's nonsensical. The uh, issue of whether or not uh, um, this is going to keep Putin from continuing to fight, the answer is Putin's already lost the war. Putin has a real problem. How does he move from here? What does he do? And so the idea that there's going to be what vehicle is used, he could end the war tomorrow. He could just say, I'm out. But what agreement is ultimately reached depends upon Putin and uh, what he decides to do. But there, there is no possibility of him winning the war in Ukraine. He's already lost that war. Imagine if even if anyway, he's already lost that war. What kind of nonsense? How dangerous is it for the president to be making statements so contrary to reality? Well, he's completely delusional. Um, There is absolutely no evidence that uh, for Russia to be losing the war, uh, Ukraine would have to be winning it. Um, There is no evidence to support any of that. Um, The the whole thing is he's trying, I I think the president is trying to make a case by repeating over and over and over again that we're winning the war. And this is largely a, a political gesture on his part, because I think there's also a sense that the American public, as well as the European public, is getting awfully tired of this and is uh, is fearful of what the consequences of all this can be. Already there have been, of course, economic consequences much more serious in Europe than here. But the fact is that this is going nowhere. And the whole idea that uh, Russia is going to surrender, because that's basically what Biden was just saying, that he can end it in one day by quitting. You know, come on, uh, the, that's not going to happen. So it's um, it's politics, I think. Uh, this guy doesn't really know what he's talking about a lot of the time. And uh, when he does talk, it's usually something that's uh, kind of stitched together uh, that, that rolls out of his head without much sense. You, you and I have talked about this many times, but on the ground in Ukraine, are your former colleagues, agents of the CIA, risking their lives to gather true and accurate uh, data to report back to their bosses in uh, Langley 
uh, ultimately to report it to the president. How do they react when they see the president of the United States saying something that's 180 degrees from what they are observing with their eyes and hearing with their ears? Well, they react with shock. And, and uh, from what I'm hearing now, you know, the, this, this, this story has kind of finally kind of turned a corner. And there are people in the Pentagon who are kind of privately talking to journalists and, and among their friends and saying this is not going anywhere from a military perspective. And of course, they, you know, there's a large CIA station in, in Kiev right now and, in, and scattered around the country. A uh, hundred men is what are a hundred people is what I've heard. And uh, these people are coming up with uh, uh, on the ground assessments, which I'm sure do not support what the president of the United States is saying. But he's getting his his inputs from people like Tony Blinken, who are as delusional as he is. And, uh, you know, he's not he's not really talking or he's talking to the director of CIA, who clearly is coming out with a lot of nonsense, too, which kind of surprises me. This guy had a reputation of being pretty much a straight shooter and honest, but uh, we're seeing something quite different. So the director of the CIA, Bill Burns, I don't know if you know him personally, but you're certainly familiar with his reputation, has been feeding these lies to, so, to Joe Biden with such skill and uh, alacrity that old Joe has made Bill Burns a member of the cabinet. Now, the director of the CIA has not been a member of the president's cabinet since back in the Reagan right. year. Um, how significant is that? Or what are the tea leaves we should read uh, into that? The CIA and the White House. Well, I think this is a working, or they think it's working on a couple of levels. I think it's it's partly done to support the argument that this is a, a good policy, that this policy is all going in the right direction and will keep Americans safe. Uh, now we have uh, national security all over the place in the president's cabinet, up to and including the CIA director. So this is a, a kind of a, a propagandistic move on the part of the president to sell a product. And I think that's that's kind of a way to look at it. Um, nobody that is in any position to be seeing the raw intelligence on what is going on uh, in Ukraine can believe anything along the lines of what we're hearing. Does the director of the CIA, now a member of the cabinet, he's not subject to the secretary of state, he's not subject to anybody but the president, see the raw intelligence or state it differently? Does he know that the material he's giving to the president is BS or does he think it's accurate? Well, uh, I think the, the director of CIA very rarely sees raw intelligence. They see finished intelligence and finished intelligence is what analysts put together uh, to forward up the food chain uh, to the consumers. Now, the consumers basically are people like the president and in his cabinet and working down from there, these are people who are very political and they want to see a certain thing in the reporting that works its way up to their desks. So I don't think they very often see raw intelligence, no. Give, give us an example either hypothetically or from your own experience of raw intelligence. What is raw intelligence as opposed to refined intelligence? Well, raw intelligence, uh, from say, shall we say, from the uh, uh, military or Pentagon perspective would be uh, order of battle on the ground and who's getting killed and who's, who's getting pushed back and that sort of thing. Now, there, are, um, there is other raw intelligence that is very relevant to what we're seeing and hearing which would be more in the CIA area. And that would be political assessments about what's going on inside the government of Ukraine and what the real capabilities of that government might be and real and what the intentions are. Now, one thing that uh, we know Biden is very nervous about is uh, Zelensky starting World War III. And uh, yet he's handing him weapons that could be used to escalate into something like that. And so there's a constant kind of concern that Zelensky is going to take these cluster bombs and, and other long range weapons and, and turn this this war, which is a regional war, into something much bigger. You made that very point uh, in your piece uh, at the UNS review called A Bit of Political Theater in Vilnius 
uh, in which you commented on and quoted uh, from uh, Sergei Lavrov, who's the uh, very astute, highly respected uh, Russian foreign minister, in which he says, we have informed the nuclear powers, the United States, Britain, and France, doesn't mention Israel, but another story for another time, but Russia cannot ignore the ability of the F-16s that Joe Biden has sent over here to carry nuclear material. And then he goes on to say, you don't surely don't expect our soldiers and our pilots to look at the plane and say, well, that can carry nuclear material. I better get rid of it. And that one can't, and I can avoid it. The fact that you're sending these planes over there is the most provocative thing you can do, Joe Biden. I think I have fairly summarized the quote that you um, extracted from uh, Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov. So question, don't Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, Bill Burns, the head of the CIA, about whom we've been speaking, tell Joe Biden how dangerous this is to provoke the Russians in this area of the use of nuclear weapons by sending jets, however old they may be and however long it may take for the Ukrainians to learn how to use them, jets that can carry nuclear weapons. Well, I rather suspect that uh, they haven't told him that in so many words. Uh, I think there is an awareness in the government uh, among the people who are uh, awake at the moment uh, that the this is a provocative move. Uh, but the, the cluster weapons are a pr provocative move, too. And um, uh, after I wrote my, my article, uh, we also learned, of course, that uh, Joe Biden was activating oh. Army reservists, 3,000 reservists uh, being sent possibly to Poland, right on the border where, where all this, this escalation is going on. So they're, they're taking a bunch of provocative steps. They should know better, but in a way they don't seem to know better. And this is what's really scary about this. Um, let's take a look at uh, Tony Blinken. If Joe Biden got under your skin, uh, Tony Blinken will get even deeper. Watch this. In terms of what Russia sought to achieve, what Putin sought to achieve, uh, they've already failed. They've already lost. The, the objective was to erase Ukraine from the map, to eliminate its independence, its sovereignty, to subsume it into Russia. That failed a long time ago. Now Ukraine is in a battle to get back uh, more of the land that Russia seized from it. Unlike the Russians, the Ukrainians are fighting for their land, for their future, for their country, for their freedom. I think that is the decisive element. And that's going to play out, but it will not play out over the next week or two. We're still looking, I think, at several months. Is there any truth in what he's saying? Well, you can always tell a, a Harvard boy to be able to tell a, a good lie with a straight face. Uh, that's total nonsense. Um, if, uh, Russia, if Russia had wanted to, Russia has never had an attention in this war with taking over or, or uh, subsuming, as he put it, um, Ukraine into Russia. Uh, that would have guaranteed 40 million unhappy people uh, having to be kept control over by the Russians. That was never the intention. The intention was to, to uh, come to, to grips with the Donbass problem, uh, to create a land bridge connecting Donbass with, um, with um, uh, Sevastopol, and uh, that really was the intention. And that's basically what's been accomplished, although it's, it's be, being kind of fine-tuned right now. There was never an intention to do any of that stuff that Blinken was talking about. And um, this is just the, this is the propaganda coming out to explain why we fight, why we are there. And of course, it's all nonsense. And is that propaganda based on data he receives from some intelligence source, whether it's CIA or whether it's his own people in the uh, State Department? That's a good question. Uh, I would suspect that it's, uh, it's uh, shall we say, it's an interpretation of data and information that's being collected. And it's an interpretation that fits the political agenda, which is probably the way we should look at, a, at all of this stuff right now. We're looking at an election next year. We're looking at, um, Joe Biden, if he runs for president, I hope not, but if he runs for president, wanting to look like a successful war leader, protecting the American people against these hideous Russians. So th this is a bit of the play going on. 
Take a look at um, uh, Secretary Austin, former four-star General uh, Austin, asked about whether or not uh, Ukraine will join NATO. And even though he catches himself and says yes, he seems a little startled at the question. So you have no doubt that after the war, Ukraine will become a member of NATO? I have no doubt that that will happen. And uh, we heard uh, just about every country, heard all the countries in the room uh, say as much. And I think that was reassuring to uh, to President uh, Zelensky. Aren't they crazy to be arguing in public that Ukraine will become uh, a member of NATO right now when Putin is deciding how deep into Ukraine to to send his troops? It's it's not only crazy, it was contradicted by what took place at the uh, the summit meeting in Vilnius. They basically came down hard on the position that Ukraine would have to win the war and could not be at war uh, to be even considered uh, as a NATO member. And beyond that, um, there was a consensus that uh, uh, Ukraine is not qualified to become a NATO member in terms of the high level of corruption in the country, uh, the state of its military, and uh, the fact that it's not a democracy. So there you go. And then and then President Zelensky called the delay absurd and weak. And he said it publicly and he said it on uh, on social media. He said this about his masters who have fed him, if you add it all up, close to a hundred billion dollars in military equipment. Absurd and weak. It's absurd for them to have done that. Of course, that's not the way he means it. Well, the uh, the British. Uh, um, a defense minister had a response to that. He said, isn't it about time you show a little gratitude? Yes. Yes. Why does he show up at these things dressed like he just came out from a tunnel, some from a from a rat pit somewhere instead of the way everybody else dresses? Is this, I don't know, a political thing with the people back home that he keeps fatigues on and he's always unshaved and he always looks unkempt? No, this is basically done for the foreign audience to make it look like he's a he's a warrior. And of course, he's he's a little comedian by training, uh, and uh, maybe that's uh, that goes a little bit into it too. But he was a he was a pathetic figure in Vilnius, where he was wandering around in his fatigues. Everybody else was dressed normally, and uh, they had a reception the night before, uh, um, and uh, he showed up in his fatigues, and everybody else was wearing suits, and uh, he had a, he was standing alone all by himself. Yes, I saw that picture. I almost felt sorry for him, although, of course, he's brought a lot of this on uh, himself. When we are speaking about um, military weapons given by the U.S. to another country, and we use the phrase the Israel model, what does that mean, Phil? Well, the Israel model basically means that you give this other country money and weapons and you put no restraint or controls over how they use that money and weapons. You look the other way when they start doing nasty things with them. And this was a concern that um, precisely the nasty things would, would be coming out of Zelensky because uh, nobody there at that conference believed that this guy had any restraint. His, his sole intention in life at this point uh, is to uh, draw the NATO alliance and the United States uh, into a war with Russia, and he'll do whatever it takes, completely reckless. Did um, our friend Victoria Newland make some kind of a power grab recently that did not turn out to her benefit? Well, I'm, as far as I know, they still haven't settled things at the State Department in terms of there was a, a lot of talk that she would be bumped up to the number two position. I think probably is, she's de facto that right now. Uh, but it hasn't been confirmed. And she was uh, recently, this uh, last few days, heading on a trip to South Africa uh, to deal with the, um, uh, the BRIC issue and the, um, the, the problem with the American dollar. So I don't know why she was the person going there. And there was a lot of concern that she was going to mess it up like she's done with everything else up till now. I guess they want to get her out of any decision making with respect uh, to Ukraine. Uh, take a look at Admiral uh, Kirby, uh, who sounds like uh, Baghdad Bob, 
uh, on with my friend and former colleague, Martha McCallum, uh, at Fox News last weekend. What they really need uh, are the four A's artillery, ammunition, uh, air defense, uh, and armor, uh, tanks. And on all four of those, we have provided uh, an, an extraordinary amount of support at, quite frankly, unprecedented speed. Those are, the, those are the four capabilities they need most. And if you look at the packages, just we just announced one yesterday, and there's going to be one here in coming days, you'll see that we are really trying to get them those kinds of capabilities. Now, look, the F-16s will, uh, will get there probably towards the end of the year, uh, but it's not our assessment that the F-16s alone would be enough to, to turn the tide here. What they really need more than anything of all those four A's is artillery. And that's why the president made a difficult decision to provide cluster munitions as a bridging solution as we build up our production capacity of normal, conventional artillery rounds. That's what they're, they're firing thousands of them a day. Uh, it's really a gunfight. Let me get this straight. The Ukrainians have run out of artillery. The Americans have run out of artillery uh, ammunition. The Americans have run out of these shells in order to give to the Ukrainians. So instead, we send cluster bombs, which are outlawed in 90 percent of the planet. Yeah, that's exactly what he's saying. And he's an idiot. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, you know, this again is to to take a a thin narrative and shape a story around it, which they think is going to sell. I mean, does does he seriously think that? Uh, given the, the manpower disparities, apart from anything else between what Russia has in terms of trained soldiers and what Ukraine has, it's uh, giving them more technology that they might do really stupid things with is a good idea. I mean, this is idiotic. How much longer will the American public, and maybe this is an unfair question because you're not on the political side, tolerate all these lies and misleading statements, whether it's from the president or whether it's from the secretary of state or the secretary of defense or the chief spokesperson for uh, the National Security Council. I mean, they almost have a lock on this. What, what the four of them just said is the same thing that you see in The New York Times, The Washington Post, I'm sorry to say, at Fox News as well. How, how much longer will it be before the American public wakes up and says, you have no off ramp, Joe Biden? The Russians have won the war already, Joe Biden. What the hell have you been telling us, Joe Biden? Yeah, well, I think in a way you answered your own question. Uh, essentially, the reason why the American public isn't already uh, screaming about all of this is because the media is giving friendly cover uh, to the White House. And uh, that's you go to if, if you watch uh, something, uh, go to CNN. CNN. Uh, go to MSNBC, uh, go to NBC. You're, you're going to see the same stuff coming out all the time about the, the Russians, the monstrous Russians, and the horrible things they've been doing, and so on and so forth. And it just keeps getting reiterated and reiterated, reiterated and reiterated. And, and, and it goes nowhere. And the public is not hearing the truth. I think this, this, uh, this move to send the reserve soldiers to Eastern Europe uh, could start to wake people up, except again, it's not being very fully re uh, reported in the U.S. media. Right, right. Phil Giraldi, always a pleasure, my dear friend. Thank you very much for joining us. I, I as I missed the show and the and the work, I miss my guests, uh, among which are you, of course. Thank you very much uh, for coming on today. More well, as we get it, and, be, and thank you, Phil. And before this week is over, Matt Van Dyke. I can't even tell you where he's going to be coming from. Colonel McGregor, Scott Ritter, Matt Ho. And whenever we get it, we'll be in front of these cameras. Judge Napolitano for Judging Freedom.